What's up guys, Awesome Nerd Show here and today we're doing a new episode of Highlight of Monday Night. Now that's the name we decided on you probably saw that in the last video um, if you saw like the label of it and everything um, but that's what the name we decided on because um, kind of doing a highlight type thing of the um, Raw and Nitro um, that we're going through and stuff from the Monday Night Wars and then um, of course you want to do like whole Monday Night Wars type thing but not like the same so it'd be something different and since it was since we were kids and stuff and watched all the time that was our highlight of monday night was getting to watch wrestling stuff so that's why we kind of chose the name um it's not the best but that's what we're going with so we are going to start this week of course going over raw and then nitro and so we are um brought to january 13th 1997 is um our week um or our shows for um this video and stuff so of course we're going to start with raw and we're still building up to um the royal rumble which is coming up with by um, this episode of january 13th it's that next or that coming sunday so less than a week away and so um this episode came from the knickerbocker arena in new in albany new york so at the same place it was last time because they film multiple um weeks in one setting and stuff so they had uh multiple stuff so the show opened with a recap of last week so everything we went over last week um it just recapped what happened and so then we have our very first match of jerry um the king lawler and triple h who is the um intercontinental champion at the time versus um man or mark marrow of course with sable and gold dust with um Mar marlena um so we the match starts with uh uh, Mark Marrow and uh, Jerry Lawler and of course it's just a like kind of like dance around type thing they're just kind of like circling the ring around each other the crowd starts chanting Burger King at um, Jerry Lawler because since he's the king they kept calling Burger King at this times which you don't hear that nowadays but it's kind of funny um, and so there's multiple times throughout the thing where um, I think Triple H or um, uh, the king or something would be like holding in this case it was a lot of times mark marrow they'd be holding him and like one would go to hit him well he would duck and stuff and so they'd like hit each other a couple times back and forth um and so uh the first time it was triple h the second time it was um uh jerry lawler and stuff and then gold dust um starts viciously attacking triple h because he you know he's trying to get back at him as we um mentioned in the elite recap of last week that triple h tried to um kidnap marlena and stuff like that and so gold dust is on a vicious attack of triple h so every time gold dust gets in the ring he wants triple h or when triple h is in and gold dust gets tagged in triple h you know runs out trying to get away and gold dust is just trying to get after him as much as possible um lawler uh gets thrown into Triple H's boot because Triple H puts his foot up on the um, rope for um, Lawler to throw s someone into. I believe it's probably Gold Dust that, like, you know, ram his head into it. Well, Gold Dust switches or whatever, and it's um, uh, Lawler gets thrown into it. And then um, Gold Dust does a meeting of the mind, so it's taking the heads of each person and um, bashing them together. Stuff. So that happens. Um, and I noticed throughout this match that uh, Jerry Lawler has some wonderful theatrics. Like his, he's very cowardly and like running away with stuff. And then when he does get off offensive moves in, he like thinks it's the greatest thing in the world and stuff and thinks he's, you know, the greatest person ever. And so he celebrates a lot and stuff. And like the way he does moves and everything and stuff, it's just like, like you'd have to go back and watch him. Like if this match is an example, and then I know like the King of the Ring, I believe from probably or King of the Ring, the Royal Rumble from probably the year before. Yeah, the '96 one where, um, uh, can Jake the Snake Roberts comes back and stuff, and he's in the Royal Rumble, and he releases a snake, and um, Waller like crawls around the ring and stuff, all weird. It's just super funny. Um, so he has an ex excellent like performer at this time and stuff. Um, we have Honky Talk Man on commentary of again looking for um, who his um, like protege or protege is gonna be and stuff um, to take up his name or whatever and stuff that he's looking for. And so we have this match. He's looking at Triple H to do that. Um, then we have oh Goldust does his like classic uppercut where he like um, 
Triple H is so like staggering in the middle of the ring. Goldust runs, bounces off the ring ropes and runs forward then falls down on his knees in front of the guy and uppercuts him, which is just holding your hand like this and just going like that into their throat. And when he does that, uh, Triple H falls backwards into the ring ropes and like falls back and then does the whole tie up thing. So his arms get tied up in the ropes. So he's stuck there like that. And of course, um, uh, Goldust just starts beating on him and stuff like that. And then he starts attacking everyone. Um, so he, of course, beats up uh, Lawler. Then he even attacks Mark Marrow and stuff. And then um, through all that, uh, Triple H and um, Lawler win through disqualification. So that's our first match of the night. Um, then there's a promo of Sid in the empty Alamo Dome getting ready for the Royal Rumble. So he's just like on the floor where the ring would be and you have get to see the complete like size of the Alamo Dome and all the empty seats around him and stuff. And he's of course just talking um, about of course beating Shawn Michaels and everything and stuff. Then you have Shawn Michaels live, it said live, who knows if it really was live, um, in San Antonio at a place called I think it was Park Place. It was I assume like a bar or something like that. And there's a whole bunch of, you know, fans around him and stuff. And so um, he's trying to, like, talk. On, he has, like, an ear thing in. And he's, like, talking to McMahon or whatever and stuff. And um, the whole time he's talking, like, it's kind of like what I've been doing. But that's because on purpose. But, like, he'll be, like, looking at the camera. And then he just keeps, like, looking down and to the right like this. Like he's reading something. Um, so it's kind of weird because, you know, you there's the complaint currently in wrestling especially in wwe that guys are um have their promos are written for them and they have to remember them and re you know recite them and stuff when they get in the ring or do whatever and stuff and at this point with him doing that it seems like that's what it is that he there's a promo written for him and so he's looking down at like the teleprompter or whatever to read it off and stuff because they'll like look at it for a few seconds and then like look back up and stuff like he's reading off of it and then um that where this park place was the site of um shotgun saturday night um that they had just had and now we go to um bret hart comes walking out through the entrance and he's walking with a limp um because of uh i believe it's the attack stone cold did on him last week during their um the vader and bret hart match so he's walking out with a limp and he's going um out to uh, the commentary table and stuff um, to do commentary for the next match, which now we get into. It's British Bulldog with Clarence Mason again since he was with Owen last week. He's now with British Bulldog since they're tag team partners. And then it was British Bulldog versus The Rock or Rocky My V at this point. And so um, Brett, of course, during the thing, is questioned a lot about um, his problems with Stone Cold. Um... But he just, you know, just, there's no <laughs> real answer to what he does. He just say, you know, I think Stone Cold's a, um, you know, a good athlete or whatever and stuff. But he's, you know, evil and um, a low life and all that sort of stuff and everything. Um, then you have Owen that comes out and harasses Brett. And so, like, throughout the match, he's just standing in front of the commentary table directly in front of Brett, just, like, staring at him. And, um... I think it was McMahon or Honky Tonker. Yeah, I think he was on commentary. Uh, says stuff about um, being there so Brett doesn't interfere in the match against Bulldog and stuff. And then um, during the match, um, there's fighting outside the ring. And uh, Stone Cold runs up and attacks British Bulldog. And so Brett sees that. And so he gets up and Owens, you know, getting up to block him thinking he's going to go interfere. But Brett's trying to point that, you know, Stone Cold's there and stuff. And he does... Um, attack so stone cold attacks his leg then does the stunner on him then goes um walking back up the aisle like looking well then brett takes off running and as he does that owen sees it or brett doesn't run he like limps or as fast as he can and owen turns around to see it so they go chasing after stone cold um that and then so they get back into the ring and the rock uh gets right back into the ring as the ref is counting doing to the count of 10 and stuff. And so he wins the match through disqualification or a count out um, because Stone Cold attacked Bulldog. So he wasn't able to get in the ring. So the Rock wins because Bulldog can't get back into the ring. And so that was match number two. And then we had a locker room interview um, with the Nation of Dominations. You have all the um, different members at this point. Um, 
And so I'll probably get to some of the members, stuff like that. And so now we have our third match coming up of Undertaker versus Crush. Now, as um, I think the Undertaker had came out, and I don't, I think the Nation of Domination was coming out, or right before they came out, um, something. Um, they went to a live shot at the Park Place with Shawn Michaels and stuff, or um, and it you could see Shawn Michaels, um, Road Dog, who um, was away from Jeff Jarrett at this time, of course, and. Um, then, like, it's showing different views. Why is it, like, pans over? You see The Rock come walking through the crowd and stuff. And um, so you get to see, like, since these were taped ahead and then the other shots are supposedly live, you see, you know, the difference of time where The Rock was just on um, the show in New York and then now he's in Texas at this other place on the same night. Um, so it's either that or it wasn't really in Texas and it was just you know, across the street or something like that. So he went over. Um, but I did assume it's the first one where it was taped ahead and he was at the live thing and stuff. But it's funny because Honky Tonk Man makes a comment to um, McMahon, Vince McMahon because he's, you know, he sees The Rock and mentions, well, there's Rocky and all this stuff. Well, Honky Tonk Man, when they get back to the arena, goes, I think you need to get your eyes checked out because you saw two rocks there. <laughs> something like that. Um because, you know, Rock can't be in two places or whatever at once and stuff, you know, keeping with the, that this is supposed to be live, even though they're taped and everything, and then the whole live shot and everything. So it was just funny seeing how the you have the problems of taping ahead of time and then doing live stuff mixed in and everything. Um, so we get into the match, and um, as Crush and the Nation Domination is walking out, um, Undertaker gets out of the ring and runs up and starts attacking Crush, and... Um, I guess he just like beats off some of the uh, or fights off um, some of the nation members and grabs Crush and then they get into the ring and fight and everything. Under um, throughout the match, you know, all these matches, I'm not gonna go like you know play by play of this, but I'm just gonna say like some of the kind of important stuff or like things that happen in the match. So in this, um, Undertaker gets up to do what they call the old school nowadays, but it's where he gets a uh, um, holds the guy's hand and climbs up to the rope and then walks across the center and jumps off. Well, as he um, climbs up, Farouk runs up and hits the ropes, and so it makes Undertaker rack himself, and so um, that like you know changes from Undertaker being dominant to Crush getting it. Well, throughout this, Crush is um, messing up a lot of moves, like so he's botching a lot and like just trying to like pick up Undertaker to do like a sidewalk slam and just drops him and stuff like that. Um, Vader comes. <laughs> He's like, it goes to the entrance ramp, so they have the big Raw sign. It's just the big block lettering of Raw, R-A-W. And so they come out, it's so R and the W are like in front, then A's behind, so they come between the two. Well, you see like Vader like peering out around the A and the W, and it looks super creepy and everything, but it's funny and stuff. So he's just like looking out because of um, his match with Undertaker, I believe. Yeah, I think he has the match with Undertaker at the Royal Rumble. And so, um, um, goes back to the ring, Undertaker crush, or crushes, choke slams crush, and then after that, the Nation of Domination enters the ring and then, um, and starts beating up the Undertaker, Vader comes running out and joins in beating up the Undertaker and they're doing stuff, um, then Vader does two Vader bombs on Undertaker while the Nation members hold him, and then Ahmed Johnson comes running to the ring, I, I believe he was injured before now. And so he comes running out to the ring in like normal clothes with a two by four and starts swinging it. Um, but he's able to get caught and um, the nation starts beating up on him. And so they're all him and Undertaker getting beat up in the ring as the show ends. So that's it for Raw. Um, so I'll take a quick break and then we'll start on Nitro. Okay, now we are going to do Monday Nitro, of course, the WCW show. And this, again, is January 13th, 1997, and this takes place in the Superdome in uh, New Orleans, Louisiana. And at this time in 97, it, um, they mention a lot that the Super Bowl is going to be taking place at the Superdome. And I think it was two weeks from, yeah, it would probably be about two weeks. Um, so it's kind of funny seeing, you know, like uh, Nitro, and they said it was sold out. You never really got to see like the arena and stuff to see if all the if you could see like empty seats or anything. Um, but to see that wrestling has a show where the Super Bowl is going to be, and probably um, 
I'd say if it was sold out, have more tickets sold because they have all the floor seating and stuff. But um, nothing's really ever mentioned more about that. But um, so you get the little nitro entrance playing, and then it's I think it like cuts out or something because it didn't seem as long as it normally did. Um, but it goes to um, immediate to like a hallway back in the locker room, and it's the giant. And he runs up and just kicks in this door, and it's a room full of um, NWO members and stuff. So they all get up trying to like block him off, and he's yelling um, something about power at Hulk Hogan, and that's all there is. And so then it goes back to the commentary table and stuff to start the show off. Um, and so we have the first match is JL, whoever that is. I don't, I didn't look up to see what his real name was, but I believe he's a um, luchador of some sort. Um, but his name is JL against Chavo Guerrero. And so most of the match, there's no like commentary. It's all about the um, NWO giant confrontation. And then, um, so they talk about, you know, being before the Super Bowl and stuff. And then, um, just with the match, uh, Chavo does a moonsault on JL to get the win. And so that's all really happens. So I was thinking most of the commentary, the match isn't that great or anything. And then most of the commentary is about the whole Hogan NW, or Hogan and Giant feud, which is coming up at um, their pay-per-view of Sold Out. I don't know the exact date of when Sold Out is. I assume it wouldn't be the same day as the Royal Rumble, so it's probably like the next week. Um which is going to have the Hogan and Giant match and stuff. Um, so there's that. And then Hexall Jim Duggan comes out. for an, um, He's supposed to have a match. But he does an interview with Mean Gene at the entrance ramp. And he talks about wearing uh, purple and gold representing ECW. Because they have a giant ECW flag that he's carrying around now. Instead of the... Which he picked up I think last week in the episode. And started waving it around and stuff. Um... Showing or saying that he's, you know, the new leader of the WCW since Sting won't do it and everything. And um, he's wearing the colors and everything. And so he goes out to um, uh, the ring and stuff. And um, he's waiting for a match with Super Calo. And then while he's um, waiting, Sting comes out and does a uh, scorpion death drop on him from behind. So he like attacks, sneaks attack him and stuff like that. And so that takes him out of the match. And so they're scramb like saying they're scrambling to get a new match on and stuff. So we come to our official second match of the night, which is Sar um, Sergeant Craig Pittman, which is just some random guy in like military outfit and stuff. And he's on in a match with uh, Jericho, and it's a really quick match, and Jericho wins um, with a drop kick off the top rope. And I forget how long it lasts, but I'd say like a minute or so. It was really fast. Um, so that's good for Chris Jericho. Um, then we immediately move into our third match, which is High Voltage, um, which I've heard of them, but I don't know anything about them. Like I looked up their names, and they didn't seem familiar, the two guys. Um, but they face Harlem Heat again with Sister Sherry. Um, and then as the match is going on, it keeps breaking to the back in, or to the locker room again, and Giants breaks into the NWO locker room again, and um, he's yelling at Hogan that you promised and all this stuff. Um, and their commentators are talking about how um, by the Giant winning World War Three, I believe it was, or um, yeah, I think it was World War Three that he, you know, it's kind of like the Royal Rumble. He gets a shot at the um, title and stuff like that. And so since he won the thing and pretty much gets like a official sh shot at the title and Hogan's using his power to um, not have the title match and stuff. So that's why he's saying you, pro um, you promised, you know, saying you would give me this match, but now he's not and stuff. And then it goes... Um, Back to the match and stuff, and uh, Harlem Heat wins with their Heat Seeker move. And so then we, that's the end of that match. Uh, now we move on to an NWO commercial for the um, sold out show. And there's, um, you can get an official um, sold out uh, t shirt and poster again with uh, members of the NWO on it. And then there's um, commentary talking, or the commentary people talking about. Um, the WCW executive committee um, are in like town staying at the hotel across the street and that they um, haven't called into action to, to decide on the whole um, giant Hogan feud thing. And then um, Ted DiBiase, Eric Bischoff, and Vincent come out um, for commentary. So, of course, as they have been, 
um, as they walk out to the commentary table, who's ever common, uh, commentating runs off. So at this point, it's uh, Tony Schiavone and Larry Zabisco, and so they go running off and stuff like that for the match of DDT and Mark Starr. So now this is, a, in terms of WCW, a pretty important match. So, of course, um, DDP gets the quick win um, with the diamond cutter on Mark, Mark Starr. It's, like again, like a minute match, and Mark Starr just some... Um, what you could call a um, enhancement talent or whatever, not doing there for anything. So after he wins, um, Hall and Nash come um, out and they get in the ring and they're hugging DDP and stuff. And they hand him an NWO shirt and he puts it on and stuff and they're celebrating around the ring. And uh, I believe uh, Scott Hall is like hugging DDP and as he, um, like they begin to like, you know, come out of the hug, uh, DDP grabs him and Diamond cuts him while Kevin Nash is turn, has his back turned, you know, playing to the crowd and everything. And um, so he does that. And so Kevin Nash, of course, the crowd goes crazy. And Kevin Nash, you know, can like hear stuff. And he turns around and sees it. And I um, think he Diamond cuts uh, Kevin Nash as well. I don't remember exactly. I can't remember off the top of my head, but he does whatever. And he goes running out through the crowd and stuff to get away and so that's a big moment of another big name of DDP um, not going with um, uh, the NWO and him like kind of marking the stop, um, spot of becoming the next leader for NWO and the next big name and stuff like or for WCW leader and becoming like their next star type thing and then we get another paper or pay-per-view um, commercial again for sold out, and it's got um, te uh, Ted DiBiase, Kevin Nash, and uh, Six, and they're each talking about the match. Like Ted DiBiase talks about the Hogan Giant match, Kevin Nash talks about his match with um, Scott Hall against the Steiner brothers, and then Six talks about his match against Eddie Guerrero for the um, U.S. title and stuff. And then, uh, let's see what's next. Uh, we have Dean Malenko versus Eddie Guerrero, which again is the U.S. champ. And in this match, it's a pretty decent match. There's, they do a lot of holds and, and reversals and stuff, so it's a lot slower um, than the normal match you used to see, but it's still pretty good. <clears throat> and the commentary team is uh, mentioning... It's hard to... Because the commentary is like so off. Like There's matches going on, but they talk about like everything else going on. And so they're talking about that the executive committee has made a decision that Hogan will face the Giant tonight, but for um, not for the title and stuff. So they keep advertising that later tonight there will be a match, so be sure to check into it. And they even say, be sure to call your friends and family on the phone and let them know about this um, so they can get over you know, to WCW to watch it and stuff tonight. So thinking that you know it's a big worldwide phenomenon type thing and stuff. Um, <coughs> and then you have... Um, Six or again X Pox if you didn't know, he comes out again, but he's at the very back of the arena. So like say I'm facing like the entrance and stuff, he's like way off over here, um, behind me, um, and he sets up a ladder again and is just sitting on it, trying to distract Eddie Guerrero, which he does, and uh, Malenko, uh, D Malenko gets the win over um, Eddie by because Eddie gets up on the um, ring, uh, the ring post or corner. Uh, turnbuckle or whatever they call it staying up there like looking over at six and um while he's up there Dean Malenko over, comes over and grabs him off for a power bomb and power bombs him and so he gets the win and so now we begin with our number two of nitro um and of course they first start out with the two attacks that the giant um did on the nwo locker room and so it just show replaying exactly what it showed already and then they bring out for match number six which is super callow against uh conan with jimmy hart um so throughout the match uh Calo, he's a really like weirdly dressed guy he's a, another luchador um but he does the suicide dive out of the ring which of course is popular nowadays with a lot of um the like indie wwe wwe guys um doing suicide dives and stuff um daniel bryan was known for doing it a lot and stuff um but he did a lot of those so of course this is you know 20 years ago and people are acting like it's such a newer thing within the past um, four years, 
three or four years and stuff, but it's been around for a while. And then, so Super Cali, he has a luchador mask on. He has sunglasses that never come off throughout the entire match. So they must be, like, sewn in or something to the back. And then he also has a, um, like, a beanie or whatever, toboggan or whatever kind of hat you call it. Um, he has one of those, and it never comes off his head, too. So, again, they must both be, like, sewn on or attached and stuff. Um but Conan ends up getting a win with some sort of weird DDT move. That's what I think it looked like. But they just said how weird. The commentary said how weird of a move it was. And they didn't know what it was. Um, <coughs> and so we move on to match number seven. Which is uh, Chris Benoit with Woman against uh, Jeff Jarrett. Um, throughout the match, uh, um, Steve Mongo McMichaels, Deborah, and Arn Anderson come out. Because they're again part of the four horsemen with uh, Chris Benoit. And so they're around the ring, and uh, something happens where um, Jeff Jarrett gets thrown into the ring ropes. Well, um, Mongo uh, grabs onto um, his tights and is holding him there, and he's trying to grab a briefcase that Deborah has so he can hit him with it, um, but she won't give it to him, so he lets go to grab it, and then like turns around and like swings it. Well, at that point, uh, Chris, or, uh, Crispin Wall's there, and so he ends up hitting Crispin Wall and stuff. Um, and I think that leads to a count out or, um, Chris Benoit ends up, uh, uh, getting pinned or something off of that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, so there's dissension and more again in the four horsemen. So that leads to an interview with me and Gene, um, as they walk back up the entrance ramp. So he does an interview with the four horsemen <coughs> and in it. Chris Benoit calls out uh, Steve Mongo Michaels for um, dropping the ball since, again, he was a football player for the 85 Bears. Um, he's saying, you know, you dropped the ball and that um, woman, which is Nancy Sullivan, um, his girlfriend or wife, whatever it is at the time, um, and that she's more of a woman than Deborah, and she's all woman and all, not fake or anything like that. And so, again, there's um, problems, again, amongst all the four horsemen. And then that leads to match number eight, which is Billy, a really small and young-looking Billy Kidman against uh, Scotty Riggs. So the second member of um, the American Males, which is with Scotty Riggs and uh, Buff Bagwell or Marcus Bagwell. So they have a match, and uh, Marcus Bagwell, or Buff, as you know, may know him, um, also walks out and stands on the entrance ramps distracting Scotty. And... Um, but Riggs still wins with the Ameriplex, I think they call it, which is um, a known move of Buff Bagwell's at the time. So, so it's like he stole the move. So that's the end of that match. And though um, now we go to commentary with, uh, again, Lee Marshall again. So I don't know who it is, but he's now in Chicago, Illinois, which is where their um, Nitro is going to be at the next week. And again, talking about Chicago-related culture stuff, probably pizza, deep dish pizza, and all that sort of stuff. So they do that um, promotion type thing and move on to the um, ninth match of um, Lex Luger versus um, Rick, a guy named Rick Fuller. Um, he's a, I don't know how to describe him. He's like a, almost looks like a caveman type guy or something. I don't know how to describe him, but um, he gets a lot of offensive movements. So I figured by that he'd maybe be a prospective, you know, WCW guy, like, you know, give him the rub of being in there with um, Lex Luger, but, you know, still um, not come out with a win or anything. Um, but he was in WCW, but it sounded like he just lost a bunch of matches and stuff. Um, but Luger gets the win with the rack attack, and it was kind of, um, Bro and I were talking, because we watched this one together, that um, how crazy the crowd went for Lex Luger, especially when he was setting up for the rack attack. When you hear, like... Um, <coughs> You hear like I've seen it, like I've watched the um a lot of Rawls and stuff back when Lex Luger was in WCW and everything, and how uh um he's not that great of a wrestler and stuff, and he's known for you know being a horrible wrestler. He can't all he's got is his body, pretty much. Everything else was crap about him, but like how crazy he was over and stuff like that and popular. Um, and so the match ends and Lex Luger's walking back up the entrance to, you know, go to the back and stuff. Well, as he's walking up, the giant comes out. So they kind of stop right in front of each other and just kind of stare each other down. And then they, like, go around each other and go their own ways. Um, and giant comes out to the ring um, where Mean Gene's waiting in the ring to do an interview type thing. 
Um, and he's talking about how uh, winning the title means everything to him. And that he's going to beat and destroy Hogan and stuff um, in their match and everything. And so it um, I assume it goes to a real life commercial or something like that. But it comes back and R.D. Anderson is walking out for his match against uh, Rick Steiner. And so we have having Rick Steiner and um, Arn Anderson. It's a um, like what I call a brawling match. So just a lot of punches and stuff and um, like strong maneuvers and everything. Um, and so throughout the match, Arn Anderson keeps like going like this, like calling for um, the four horsemen to come down, you know, to be out there and to possibly help him win and stuff. But he keeps doing that and no one ever comes out. And, uh, Arn Anderson ends up, ends up just walking out and going to the back and stuff. And so um, Rick Steiner gets the win by disqualification. And Mean Gene enters the ring again to do an interview with um, Rick and Scott about their match against um, Hall and Nash at Sold Out. And it's kind of funny. Mean Gene is like trying to cut him off probably for um, running out of time or going to commercial or something. And uh, Scott Steiner just keeps continuously talking and stuff. Even though he's trying to cut him off. Um, and then we got another sold out commercial again, just going over the NWO, uh, members that have matches and stuff and how they're going to win and everything. And so we get to our main event of, um, Hulk Hogan versus the giant. And this is match number 11. So that's one thing I've noticed, of course, with it being two hours, they have a lot more matches than, um, WWE does. Um, so like they have 11 and WWE has three. So even if you added another hour you would have six for wwe um or f at the time and so you can see the whole um depends on how long they run matches and stuff like that um so of course this um starts with the nwo members coming out um on the entrance ramp and then hogan coming out and doing his whole playing the belt as a guitar type thing and stuff and he comes out to the ring and then the giant walks out and there's no music playing and everything's just like super silent and as he's walking out um even i think it was bobby heenan even mentioned you know the nwo was on the entrance but when he comes out there's no one there so the whole time i'm thinking oh he's gonna get attacked from behind and everything but nothing ever happens so he gets to the ring so of course as he hits the ring hogan climbs out and him and uh teddy hart or teddy hart teddy um, DV or Ted DiBiase are out at ring sign stuff and Hogan's just saying a bunch of crap and like he does a whole promo thing um, talking crap about the giant stuff well he's close to the ring and the giant comes over and grabs him and then ends up picking him up and over bringing him into the ring so the match starts um, and so they start fighting of course giant just starts destroying him and everything and the whole time the commentary team saying that um they're running out of you know time for the show and that uh, the premiere of the new adventures of Robin Hood I think of the show is coming on and so they have this special contract thing with um, I think it was TNT um, that so during commercials of the um, uh, Robin Hood show it would go back to Nitro to show the Hogan and Giant match and stuff. So the, um, it'll show stuff and then the screen goes black for a second, you know, showing that it would be going to uh, the Robin Hood show. And then it comes back to show rest of the match and stuff. And it does this twice. First time it just comes back and shows Giant beating up on Hulk Hogan more. Then goes back to the show and comes back for last time. Um, and this time the NWO members all come running into the ring to attack the Giant. And he's in there actually fighting them all off by itself. And then he ends up uh, getting the win, um, of course, by disqualification because of all the NWO members. And so it's him fighting a bunch of guys when the show ends. So that's it for the um, January 13th episode of 1997 Raw and Nitro. So again, that was your highlight of Monday night. Um, again, be sure to hit that thumbs up if you are enjoying. Um, leave any comments you have um, critiquing or help you, things I can do to change and help out. I want to try and shorten it down, so that's why I was just trying to read through it as fast as possible. Um, but I feel you don't get as much stuff, and I know a lot of matches, I just say who, what the match is and then who wins. But others, I go into more detail, but I'm trying to just get a whole like storyline picture mostly. Um, 
So again, if you have anything that could help or anything, leave comments down below. Again, subscribe to see other videos. Again, we're going to have another one next week. I may be doing one on the Royal Rumble 97 since it's the um, 20th anniversary coming up. Uh, not this weekend, which would be today, but I think it's next week. Um, so I'd probably have it out that Sunday if I did. If not, there'll be the um, Raw after... Uh, after the Royal Rumble will be next Monday again because I've we've decided to put it out um a little bit earlier in the day. I think it's an hour or two earlier or could be earlier than that. I don't remember when I put it out. Um but uh it'll the um this highlight Monday night um videos will come out on Monday afternoon so you can watch and stuff before we get to Raw and everything. Um but that's gonna be it. Be sure to please hit that subscribe button to see more and we will see you next time. Oh, 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 oh